Hi! Hi! <laughs> Hello and welcome back to my channel. First things first, we're gonna let these space buns live their life, okay? This is quarantine, we can do what we want, we can look how we want, and today, this is just what my hands did, okay? I didn't have any intentions of rocking space buns in the video, but it's what happened. Space buns? living. All right, so in today's video, I'm going to show you guys how I tie-dye a sweatsuit, aka some sweatpants and a sweatshirt. I'm actually going to do a zip-up hoodie. So I got this hoodie from Target. I think it was like 12 bucks. It's just a regular white zip-up hoodie. And then these are just a pair of white um, sweatpants that I had. So we're going to do these guys as well. These are champions, so they're a little more expensive side of things. Um, depending on where you get them from, you can find like pretty cheap champion stuff on like Macy's. I'm a little nervous because it's just like a lot of fabric to tie up. I didn't get big rubber bands, so I really only have the rubber bands that came in my tie-dye kit. This, this is the first tie-dye kit that I bought, um, but I'm gonna link two different ones for you guys. I'm gonna link this one, and I'm gonna link this one that I got. This one came in this bag like this, but I noticed that these bottles in the bag are way bigger than the bottles in this little kit, you see? So like you could get a lot done out of this guy. I was using like one of these to do a pair of socks. So I like these bigger size bottles because you can get more things done. If you follow me on social media, you have seen that I've been making little tie-dye um, pieces. This one is for my niece, she's six, and then a little matching top. So I made her this purple set. Also made her this little pink set. This was the first one that I did with the little chorties. I got brave and did two-tone socks. So these are purple and yellow and they made orange. A thing that you want to remember with tie-dyeing is if you look at a color wheel, it will really help you. You don't wanna put any colors together that naturally won't mix. Otherwise, you're just gonna end up with like brown spots on your tie-dye. I personally am into the one color tie-dye. It's so bright. You can't even see, but I made myself um, a green outfit. I'll just show you guys some pictures of them, but I made myself a green outfit. I made myself a multicolored set, which I really like. This one I used pink, blue, and yellow, and there's obviously orange in it because the two colors mixed. And then my favorite one, I did the crinkle technique on my pink set, which is what we are going to be doing today. Dang. I really wanted to do a peach set today, but I thought I had a big bottle in the peach shade, but I don't, it's actually orange. So, I also had a lot of questions on how I got that baby pink shade because a lot of the pink that's in the tie-dye kits is a very intense like fuchsia. So what I did was filled it up like regular and then I poured it all out and I filled this up completely with water and then I just added like a little bit. And then if you squeeze it onto a paper towel, you can get like a pretty good gauge of what the color is gonna look like. So you can just keep adding more water to the dye to make it a lighter color. So that's how I got that baby pink shade. If you want any of your colors to look more pastel or light, you can just dilute them with water and then again just test it on a paper towel. Also, you can wash it out sooner than the recommended 24 hours. A lot of these pieces, I just had the dye on for around 3-4 hours and washed them off and they still look really good. So if you want a lighter color, just add more water or wash them out sooner. But if you want the full intensity of color, make sure you leave it on for the recommended 6-8 to eight, or overnight if you want. I'm really upset. I thought there was a peach in here. <laughs> All right, let's go tie-dye some things and let's get it going. All right, I just find it easier to work down on the floor. You see that I have like a little protective layer, but if anything gets on this carpet, it's not a big deal to me because there's just a lot that's on this carpet from Halloween videos. And I'm gonna take this carpet out pretty soon anyways. So it's not that big of a deal, but if you are concerned, make sure you're just working somewhere that you won't stain it. These little paper gloves come in the tie-dye kit and then you're gonna need some rubber bands. Like I was saying, these are the rubber bands that come in the tie-dye set. So if you give them like a good stretch, they will start to just loosen up a little more. Excuse me, ma'am. Also, I found a teal bottle of tie-dye. So I'm gonna try to do teal because I feel like I haven't dyed anything teal yet. I am gonna dilute this though a little bit so it's a little bit of a lighter shade. So you're gonna need some water because you're going to dunk whatever you're tie-dyeing into the water. Also, it's going to stain your fingers right away, so just keep that in mind. I'm going to pour the tie-dye in here, probably about half of it, and then I'm going to take this turkey baster and fill it up 
with water and then add the water. I find that I like the shades just a little bit more if they're a little lighter. And then make sure you put this die somewhere that you're not gonna knock it over because this guy is strong and he is powerful. And then if you wanna test your color, you can just take like a white paper towel and squeeze some color onto it. And then you can kind of get like a rough estimate of what your color is gonna look like. I think I'm gonna water this down a little more actually because that looks pretty intense still. Here's our final shade. I feel like it's, like I said, hard to see on camera, but you can see that that first one is just a lot more blue compared to our last one. So now that we have our custom color, we can get to dyeing. I'm a little nervous for these tie-dye pants. So I'm gonna put my gloves on because I have dye on my hands already, but if you don't have any dye on your hands, you can just do this with, you know, your hands, but I don't want to risk it. I'm just gonna get this soaking wet. So you just want to put whatever you're dyeing in a bowl of water and just get it wet. If you watched my tie-dye sock video, all these steps are really similar. But you guys want it to see a sweatsuit, so that's what we're doing. Yeah, it is kind of hard to get this guy in there. If you got like a bucket or something, that would probably work best. It's just going to help the dye stay in there, and it just helps it bleed better onto the fabric. And then you're just going to squeeze it out. Same for the pants. You just want to get them wet. And then squeeze them out, which is the hardest part. So I took my gloves off to just give it a ring out once more and then you're just going to lay whatever you're working on flat. We're going to do the crinkle technique on this guy. Get this hoodie out. If you want to do the spiral, all you need to do is grab a chunk from the middle and turn inward. As you can see it's already spiraling and you just continue to turn until you don't have any fabric left and then you rubber band. But for me, I like the crinkle technique which is a lot easier. So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna start grabbing the fabric like this and just start like crinkling it up. Like that. And zip the hoodie. So that crinkle part is easier to deal with. So you're just crinkling, just kind of squishing everything close to each other. Do this side at the same time. get it in close you see I'm pulling the background and like some of these pieces like they don't want to cooperate you make them cooperate I have no idea how I'm gonna tie this up that's gonna be a task on its own but just keep squishing it together or crinkling it up you know drop cloth, whatever this is. All right, so then it looks something like that. And now I have to try to rubber band that and secure it together. The nice thing is, is it's hard to like mess up the crinkle. So I'm just gonna take as many rubber bands as I think we could use on this. Voila, that's what we have. I'm gonna push him to the side and I'm gonna do our pants. Ow. Now we have everything tied up, we can start dyeing. I personally like one color tie-dye 
with white. I feel like it's more versatile. You can wear it with more things. So to ensure that there is white in this guy, I'm gonna make sure that I can see white. So I'm gonna need some plastic bags just to put your piece in afterwards. I'm hoping that this all fits in there because these are the biggest things I've tie dyed so far. So hopefully that we can make that fit. Otherwise you can just use plastic wrap and wrap it. You just wanna wrap it so that you keep it damp. Ready? Here goes nothing. Good. make sure you shoot down in to it. All right, he's good to go. We'll set him to the side. And now I just need to mix up some more dye for our pants. let these guys marinate and then I will see you guys when it's time to wash them out all right so these guys have been sitting for about six or seven hours it's about 9 30 so I'm gonna go rinse these out and see what we got so I'm gonna rinse in cold water until the water runs clear and then we're gonna throw them separately into the washing machine <laughs> 